Let's do this. Hey guys, who's all excited for this upgrade that I got going on? I am. I've been waiting for this for a really, really long time. We're going to take this old setup right here. And we're going to make it look like that when we're done. You'll need pretty much a handful of assortment tools, parts. Not too much though. Not what a guy would think of. Not as much as what you need on the front. The front was quite a few team associated parts. Let me show you a few things. Um, you get the turnbuckles. Get the arm, dog bone, rear uh, hub assembly, few miscellaneous parts, and um, I had to make this. That's the only custom piece here, and you'll see in a little bit why. Just going to explain a few things here. Um, I left it together <clears throat> so you can see a before and after. Uh, we're going to disassemble this real quick. What we need to do, starters, is the stock uh, hinge carrier slash chain holder, blah, blah, blah. If you notice, I uh, I had to come in here and I had to notch this out. What I use is just a hobby knife. I cut that out. So what I did is I scored it. Okay. I'm just coming in there and just rolling the plastic back. I mean, you can use a Dremel. Trying to do it with tools that everybody's going to have. All right, <clears throat> next is we're gonna take the existing hinge pin. I take some steel wool, drill. Drill on high. All right. Few things that you're gonna have to do here is, um, you saw I cleaned up the hinge pin. Um, this is a custom part. It's off of another uh, shock tower I had. Um, actually, I cut this off of my ECX Revenge. Because uh, I upgraded the shock towers from this aluminum piece to um, a more heavy-duty aluminum shock tower. And then uh, what we got here, I'm going to explain the parts. Uh, this is, uh, so let's start with it, standard um, team associated uh, turnbuckles, um, RPM rod ends. Then I got some hinge pins. 
biggest thing is uh, B2, B3 dog bone. Um, HPI uh, solid axle cups. That's what these are. Okay. And then what I did is I had to take a um, cutoff wheel and open that up in there for the for that to slide in there. Okay. So yeah, I guess I was off. That's another customization. And then you'll have to drill this that hole out because it's smaller. And I got some drill bits here. So I started off with a start off with a, a 330 seconds and then I went to a 764. Just it made it easier for drilling. And then you do you use a um, um, oh my gosh um, thread cutter. Sorry, and I used all I could find at my local hard, hardware store was a four by forty thread pattern. Uh, it works. It's not exact for the for the pin that you're going to be doing. You're going to reuse the stock uh, pin, and I upgraded screws a long time ago for my shocks and whatnot. All right. Okay, reason for this plate is with this Timus, I've tried everywhere trying to find any arms, but I might as well keep with Team Associate since I got a Team Associate B42 front end. You can use uh, Team Associated stock A arms. Uh, what this plate does, it because of the otherwise because you can't get a different rear shock tower for this uh, for the CCX buggy. And if you look at ECX's design, they have this little here. So what we're doing is we're basically doing the same thing. And again, this is off the ECX Revenge shock tower. Uh, I cut it off, and these holes lined up. I didn't even have to drill these holes; they're all the same. All those holes, all these holes, line right up. So we're going to attach this real quick. I use tire glue anytime I'm screwing something into plastic or composite and I don't want them to come out. Okay. Also, you gotta pick up some nylon um, spacers. I got this off of Amazon. Like literally, you get an assortment of nylon washers, all different sizes. Uh, works really good. I do a lot of customization on, on a lot of my vehicles, so I like uh, everything good. Call RC. Spray this bad boy up. Associated rear hub assembly, associated outer hinge pin, again some nylon washers. Here's the next customization you got to do. I did a lot of research on trying to find me one of these, and that was the big hang-up. Um, it's it's got some slop here, so my thing, what I used, 
with some electrical tape and uh, I just wrapped the shaft, the tranny shaft, so that you know you don't want to do anything per, uh, permanent. And if you got to rip the tranny apart, you can do so. <clears throat> so take your utility knife, cut your electrical tape in half, so you don't need it as wide. Yeah, that fits on there nice and snug. You don't want it too tight. I was just pulling the tape off, so we're going to trim a little bit more off. So you're going until this slides on there. Okay. So now, take a drill bit. Kind of push on that shaft, and you can find that hole. Hobby knife will work too. <clears throat> okay. I only threaded one side because you only need one side threaded, so I'm going to put that side up. tight on this. You need this associated uh, red o-ring you can get a pack of them, silicone o-ring. Also, I had to take a uh, cutoff tool, shave that down. You had to make it shorter, okay? both sides because I couldn't find the exact uh, shaft that I needed so we'll, we'll put that in there all right turn buckle one this way one that way I'm getting ahead of myself here
I went ahead with the stock rear ECX shocks. You can see I got a, a blue bumper in there because of the travel. I'll explain that in a little bit. But the travel, you can't get full travel um, with this setup because of the dog bone. What I mean is full travel of what we have allowed for shaft. Um, so I'm just using the stock shocks right now. I put a spacer on here. All right. There we go. We have dog bone. And you can see see that's perfect. Next video, up and coming video, we'll have I'll do my walk through on some adjustments and um I'll talk about my uh, what I used for some gearing here and some couple miscellaneous. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and put any comments down there. And also I will have a list of all the parts used down in the description. Thank you.